Hello, it's Delaney James. Um, this week's presentation, I chose to do it on skeletal muscle fibers. Um, I do want to preface that I am feeling a little under the weather, so if I'm sniffling or coughing, um, I apologize in advance. So we will be looking at um, what a muscle fiber is, um, what these muscle fibers do with ATP, or what is ATP's role in a muscle fiber. Uh, we will, of course, be differentiating between the three main types of skeletal muscle fibers, um, the slow oxidative, fast oxidative, and fast glycolytic. And lastly, we'll be looking at an article that discusses muscle diseases in relation to skeletal muscle fiber types. <clears throat> so, what is a muscle fiber? Our muscular system works together to control our movement um, with our skeleton, with our internal organs, and our muscle tissue is made up of smaller units known as muscle fibers. A muscle fiber consists of a singular cell, and when clustered together, they facilitate organized movement, like picking up weights, running a marathon, doing a dance routine. We can break up muscle fibers into three groups, skeletal, muscle, or cardiac, each of which are slightly different due to their purpose. We are only going to focus on skeletal muscles for the rest of this presentation. Skeletal muscle tissue is found attached to most bones via tendons and ligaments. Each muscle in our body is made up of hundreds of thousands tightly, tightly wrapped um, fibers with connective tissue. I'll move that out of the way there. I like to think of it kind of like Russian nesting dolls where there's one inside of another after another after another. It's the same thing kind of with our um, muscle structure. If you look at this picture down here, we have our large muscle right here. And as we slowly break that down, we get these groups of muscles that we can slowly keep breaking down keep going into all these little bundles of fibers until we slowly get to one muscle fiber that makes up our entire muscle. All right, so muscle fibers and ATP. Uh, muscle cells require ATP, just like all cells in our body. Um, the type of muscle cell, however, is dependent on the amount of ATP required and how well it uses it and how it obtains it and those things like that. There are really four main, three to four main ways that muscle cells use ATP. The first is that myosin ATPase is going to split ATP and it's going to provide that energy needed to actually complete the power stroke for the cross bridge. The second way is that ATP must bind to myosin in order for the cross bridge to detach from actin and symbolize the end of the power stroke so that the cycle can be repeated. The third one, which I kind of clumped the last two together into one, um, is transport of calcium ions back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum is active transport, therefore ATP is needed. And lastly, using the sodium potassium pump it is ATP dependent because it is also active transport, um, returning sodium potassium ions into and out of the cell. Uh, this kind of synopsis of ATP in the muscle cell is important before we can figure out the different types of muscle fibers because the type of muscle fiber is dependent on their ability to synthesize ATP and the ATP splitting capability of our fibers. Um, so it's ultimately wanting to contract and relax all of which is dependent on ATP, which is the energy currency of our body. <clears throat> so the three main fiber types, this is just a really quick synopsis of all three. I will be going into detail about them later on. Um, so there are three main types of skeletal fibers. Uh, we get slow oxidative, fast oxidative, and fast glycolytic. They are different due to their biochemical capabilities. Um, so the two main differences um, is the speed in which the muscle contracts, so whether it's fast or slow, and the type of enzymatic activity used for ATP, whether it does oxidative or glycolytic 
um, metabolic metabolic pathway to form that ATP. ATP. Goodness. So the first one we're going to talk about is slow oxidative. Slow oxidative muscle fibers have a slower myosin ATPase activity, meaning that they split ATP at a slower rate. This slower rate of myosin ATPase makes the energy available less. So this is going to result in a slower twitching muscle. Um, so the slower the rate of myosin ATPase, the slower it takes the energy to be available for the cross bridge to cycle, resulting in a slow twitch. It's like this lag in a video game. The slower it takes to load, the slower you're going to be getting started. It takes approximately 50 to 100 milliseconds to reach, I'm sorry, microseconds to reach this twitch tension. There's a graph coming up that depicts slow versus fast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Goodness. Um, the second part of this muscle fiber, so we talked about the slow part. Let's talk about the oxidative part. Um, it is oxidative, which is meaning uh, that the ATP synthesized is going to rely on oxidative phosphorylation, which is going to produce a higher amount of ATP, approximately 32 ATP molecules per glucose molecule. And it's not going to exhaust these energy stores. Um, we all know that mitochondria is, quote unquote, the powerhouse of the cell. It is where ATP synthesis is going to occur. So muscle fibers that take part in oxidative phosphorylation are going to contain an abundance of mitochondria. And they also require a large amount of oxygen. That is that oxidative part. So they are rich with capillaries and myoglobin, um, which is going to give them that red color. So to summarize, slow oxidative fibers have aerobic metabolism, that need for oxygen. They have a slow contraction frequency and a high resistance to fatigue, meaning you're not going to get tired super fast. So a slow twitch combined with the great ability to synthesize ATP makes muscles with a higher concentration of these slow oxidative fibers more functional for endurance use. Think running marathons or standing for seven plus hours, things that your your body needs lots of energy um, to produce over a long amount of time. Running a marathon is very long. Your muscles are working very hard. Standing for seven hours, while it doesn't seem like that hard as running a marathon, your muscles are still working and they need that endurance. Fast oxidative muscles metabolize ATP the same way um, by oxidative phosphorylation. They require large amounts of oxygen, so many capillaries are present as well. There is also that high number of myoglobin present again, so we see this red color. The difference, however, is the increased frequency of contraction. They have a high ATPase activity. So ATP can split very, very rapidly. Energy is available very, very fast. So that cross bridge can cycle over and over and over again, creating this fast twitch. Uh, the peak twi twitch tension time for, for a fast twitch muscle is between 15 to 40 milliseconds. Uh, this muscle is sort of the in-between muscle, as I call it, because it's not quite an endurance muscle, but it's not quite a sprinting muscle. It, it has this high affinity for ATP, but it's also going through ATP, ATP pretty fast. But the resistance to fatigue isn't that high and it's not that low. It's very intermediate. Everything about the fast oxidative um, muscle fiber is intermediate um, for the most part. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So the force provided is larger. We get this large burst of twitch very, very fast. Resistance to fatigue is maintained, is how I like to put it, but it's not at the rate of the fast oxidative fiber. Muscles with a higher concentration of these fibers are really good for extended mild work, uh, maybe like running the 400 meter race. Not as long as a marathon, there's still work that needs to be done. It's still not easy. Your muscles have to work. However, they're not 
in it for the long haul. There's, they're still working. It's that nice middle range of work for our muscles. So here's that graph I was telling you about. Um, we see the time it takes for the fast twitch muscle to reach its maximum tension. It's, it's very quick. It's that yellow line. Very, very quick. That ATP is cycling and that cross bridge is, is pulling faster. That slow twitch, however, it's going to take a while for that ATP to split and it's going to take longer for that cross bridge to actually pull the muscle in order to contract. So it takes a longer time. But that energy, once again, is going to be... Um, stored a little better it's it's slower to fatigue you can use those muscles longer <clears throat> moving on to the last type of muscle fiber we have fast glycolytic so this is similar to the fast oxidative muscle and the idea that the fast glycolytic also has a higher atpase activity so they are able to split atp fast enough for the cross bridge to continue to cycle rapidly, once again creating that fast twitch in the muscle if there is a higher concentration of these fibers. However, rather than metabolizing using oxidative phosphorylation, these fibers use glycolysis. So they actually have a lower number of mitochondria, but they have a higher number of glycolytic enzymes. And they also have a lot of stored glycogen so that glycogen can be broken down and creating ATP. <clears throat> Glycolysis is an anaerobic process, so it doesn't need much oxygen to occur. So we see less capillaries, less myoglobin, which is going to produce a wider color um, in our muscle if there's lots of these fibers present. So these fibers are good at splitting ATP, so the muscle will contract faster, but however, glycolysis is only going to produce approximately two molecules of ATP per glucose molecule, where with our oxidative muscles, we were seeing 32 molecules of ATP. So we had this large amount of ATP present, and it depended on how fast can our muscle break it down. Now we have this glycolysis process going on, we know our fibers can break down this ATP fast. We can split it. That cross bridge is going to contract fairly fa fast. The issue here, however, is how much ATP do we have? Okay, glycolysis doesn't produce as much as oxidative phosphorylation. So even though the muscle can contract fast, the ability to maintain that speed is decreased because of glycolysis. So the resistance to fatigue is quite low. We're going to get fatigued really, really fast. Muscles with a higher concentration of these fiber fibers are perfect for sprinting a short amount of time with all out energy. This would be an example of the 40 meter dash. So our slow oxidative gave us the marathon. Our fast oxidative, fa fast oxidative, excuse me, gives us our 400 meter run and our fast glycolytic is going to give us our 40 meter dash. So this is just a nice diagram that kind of uh, differentiates between the pathways of glycolysis and oxidative phosphorylation in reference to how, what ATP is needed for contraction and relaxation because once again ATP needs to bind to myosin in order to release the actin so our muscle can relax, ATP is needed for that. All of our muscle fibers come down to how can we use the ATP to allow our body to function well. So this is a nice picture that kind of shows you the red versus white. Um, on the left side over here, we see no myoglobin. Right? We got a very white color of muscle. In the middle, I believe this is chicken breast. It's a very pink color. We see some myoglobin present, not a lot. And over here, we see tons and tons of myoglobin. And so the color of the muscle kind of tells us what it's used for. Is it used for fast sprinting type of energy or is it used for long haul endurance type of energy? When I was doing my research, <clears throat> excuse me, 
for this project, I, I stumbled across this paper um, from Talbot and Maves, and it pretty much researched this idea of do muscular disorders have a particular fiber type that they are going to target? And so they recognize the difference of muscle fibers within this paper and the impact that these fibers can have on a muscular disease like dystrophies and sarcopenia. There are many diseases that are going to affect a specific skeletal muscle fiber and understanding these fiber type specific effects can provide insight into pathology and treatment for these disorders. Just one example from the study is the Duquesne muscular dystrophy. It is a childhood muscular dystrophy caused by mutations in the DMD gene, and it affects our type 2 fibers, which are our fast fibers, and it's going to prefer those over our slow fibers. And so this is going to mean that our fast fibers are going to deteriorate or degenerate first. And this article or this paper suggests that Selectively promoting the slow muscle fiber function could be a therapy option. And so the study cites another study that was conducted where they used the DMD MDX mutant mouse to model DMD degeneration. And they found that either genetic or pharmacological manipulations that enhance symptoms also activate a slow muscle Phenotype. So our slow muscles are more resistant to DMD, so promoting a slow muscle fiber type would provide some resistance to DMD because it's going to want to target that fast muscle. So if we're promoting slow muscle development, DMD degeneration is going to slow down a little bit. This is just one example of many from that paper that discusses and points out some other muscular disorders that target specific fiber types and how promoting the opposite fiber type could actually reduce the symptom and slow down the progress of the particular disorder. These are my sources. I hope you learned something. I apologize for my coughing and sniffling. Um, there's a flu going around my school, um, but I hope that you at least learned something, even through my groggy voice. Have a blessed day.